Howdy folks and welcome to Ugly Dog Viewers. Today we're going to talk about how and why and what I got started with. The three bad words. That's when the uh, obsession began. So when I started painting back a long, long time ago, I actually started with an Iwata Ninjet compressor is what I started painting with uh, this thing only goes up to like 14 or 15 pounds of pressure but it was a good one to start learning on and I started at that point with a Neo brush I want a Neo I've got several of these running around in here so that's kind of how I started and where I'm at now. And this compressor is still good. This compressor is four or five years old and it still will put out the air. It'll still paint. I just like my new one better. It's really loud. And it's, it's really loud. You adjust the air pressure right here. Well, let me turn it around here a little bit. Right here is where you adjust it more or less pressure. It's just nothing like my new one. So, that's kind of about how, what I started with. And I started, like I said, with a Neo brush. I want a Neo brush. So that's that. Where I'm at today is a whole new ball game. Uh, this is a airbrush holder. And I think we bought these at a Harbor Freight is where I found that one it'll hold four airbrushes easily which I got one two three four five six and three more in the drawer so I've got nine of them in the shop I graduated myself up to what they call a Sparmax compressor right here it's got a moisture trap it's you just air pressure on top it's a great compressor it's got a filter that you pull out of the back right here and change that filter pretty often and it'll last a long time the one I got in here now that I actually paint with this one's just a spare this is Melissa so it's a spare but it's the same compressor the one that I got down here is three years old folks I'm still painting every every day with it so I keep a moisture trap at my compressor and I keep one underneath my brush that's a very very good thing and just release that moisture because you don't want that moisture spitting out while you're painting so moisture trap is a must once that you get going good uh, airbrush that I'm at today Iwata HPCS this is an Iwata HPCS this is a master and this is a detail brush. This has an 0.02 needle in this brush. So this is for very, very fine lines. And we got a trigger Neo. You adjust it back here for how much paint you want to come out. And a pretty good brush. This is the one that my wife likes. Uh, Jason has one. It's over here same brush oops very same brush he likes his neo too because uh he can control the trigger better on it than he can on the top see there right at you girl you keep telling me you need a little alcohol in your life and that's all i was trying to do thank you so this is how i started I started small and worked my way up. There is uh, lots of good airbrushes out there. Uh, Iwata is readily available for us and we've had very good luck with them. Uh, Master, Posh, there's a whole lot of them out there. They're all just good brushes. The trick to keeping your brush is you keep that dude lubed, that needle lubed, you keep this lubed and you keep that brush clean uh, 
if I have a painting session in here that's three hours, I take my brush apart and clean it and put it back together. And I oil it. I keep my brush and stuff oiled. Maintenance is going to be a key part of keeping your brush in good shape. Uh, they're very simple to clean. We have a video back in somewhere in our library of how to clean a brush. So, uh, yeah, please keep your brush clean and keep it lubed. Uh, for me, I use the uh, water lube. I'm sure three in one oil would be fine too. Uh, some people use turtle wax on their needles and they wax their needle to where the paint don't stick to it as much. It's just all your preference, but I prefer what I got here is the eye water. I got a lot of these little old things running around in here. So uh, this is kind of how I started. That don't mean this is the right way for you to start, but this is how I started. If you can afford it, by all means, start at the top. But if it's just a hobby and you're learning to do it, I would start at lower and work my way up like I did. So now we're going to get on to the next segment which is going to be we're going to talk about the paints that I started with. Alright folks let's talk about paints. So when I first started painting back some years ago I started with Apple Barrel Paints, Anita's Paints, and deco art paints. Every one of these was purchased at Walmarts. Uh, some of them probably at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, wherever I was at, and it's probably mostly Hobby Lobby. But these paints all have to be thinned. They will run through a brush fine once that you thin them. And this is the thinner that I use. You can thin these with water, but I use thinner. It's just my personal preference. And this is a 4011. We used to use 4012. It's from Createx and it's a water based thinner. But we can't get 4012 in our part of the wood no more. I think Hobby Lobby quit carrying it because it was flammable. So that's where we started was with these. And then we graduated ourselves up a little bit after I kind of figured out that I really loved what I was doing. And we started buying metallic paints. Same thing. These are a Deco Art Extreme Sheen Metallic and this is Amethyst that I'm holding. This is a Sapphire Blue and this is Lime Green. So uh, you thin those. Same thing. Great text. 4011 and then we got into priming our baits and for me I use metallic Anita's metallic for primer and I shoot three to five coats on every bait yeah uh, that's just what works really good for me thin it the same way it's pretty simple so that's got the priming out of the way too so color shift these are a folk art color shift very beautiful very beautiful paint to use this one shifts from blue to a purple yeah. thin it the same way it's very simple <clears throat> and then we get up into our createx which I spray probably 85 percent of my baits now only with createx because I do not have to thin it you can run it right on through your brush right out of the bottle I mean I still use these I still use these and I still use these but most of my baits are with these uh, createx airbrush or createx wicked either one's the same thing these two are wicked and this is a airbrush but they're all the same createx paints this is sepia which i buy it in the big jugs because i use a lot of sepia it's a good detail paint it's uh from 
create text too. Wicked colors. Detail sepia. Number on it's 0070. It's a number for that. But this is kind of where I started. Just to make sure that I was going to like this. And now I'm obsessed with uh, painting. But these, pretty cheap. Uh, you can go in there sometimes and find them for 50 cents. Most of the time they're like a buck ninety-nine or something per bottle. You can paint a lot of baits out of one of these bottles. A lot of baits. These I think were like two ninety-nine. Exactly two ninety-nine for the metallic deco arts. You can paint a lot of baits out of these. These color shift a little higher. I think they were three forty-nine or something when I bought them. But you get into the pearlized, the Createx. They're $6.99 a bottle, but you can paint a lot of baits. And you do not have to use thinner. Which this thinner is $13 a bottle here. It's what it costs here. I don't know what it be in your neck of the woods, but in mine it's $13 a bottle. And you don't have to thin these. So you kind of got to make up your own mind as to whether you want to thin or not thin. That's your personal preference some colors you can't that's in the cheaper paints you can't find in these paints so a lot of times i combine mine so that's about all i got to say about paints except the next step up will be the candy colors i don't have any candies and i don't know that i will have any candies for a long time so i guess we'll move on to the next and part of this little thing little how-to video and it's going to be epoxy okay folks now we're on to our epoxy part of this how-to video for us we use bob smith industries epoxy it's 4500 pound it's a 30 minute slow cure epoxy uh we love it uh, there's a lot of good epoxies out there devcons all right you know there's a whole lot of them this is just what fits and is ready available in our area so 12.99 is what it cost i can probably get 50 to 75 baits out of one of these the thing about the bsi epoxy is you got to mix it exact amounts and I use a 6cc Monogex syringe 1cc 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 epoxy 1cc hardener and so forth and so on depending on how many baits you're going to do typically I can use two and two and do three baits typically I've been painting saltwater baits the last couple of days they're going down the coast of Texas and it takes a whole lot more to cover a big bait. So, but that's uh, kind of how I do my epoxy and I make sure I measure it. I use these little old popsicle sticks, stir it up. And uh, once that you get your epoxy mixed, if you're gonna add glitter, you add glitter into your epoxy. And it don't take much to really make a bait pop and shine good. Uh, this is a, extra fine glitter here and this is just a gunmetal gray uh, you get it in all colors neon yellow now this is what they call a uh, go create and it's a holographic blue glitter it's much much bigger than that extra fine and I only use this in certain saltwater baits don't know if you can see it real well there but it's it's kind of a long piece, long pieces of glitter. Yes, I'm 55 years old and I like to play with glitter. There's there's a whole lot of lot of great things out there you can do. So we went over that and over that. So this is the brushes I use. They're an acid brush. I always try to pull any of the 
loose hairs out of them but you don't want that hair in your epoxy you got to pay particular close attention when you're brushing to take and make sure you're not leaving any hairs and if you are just brush it off the end and pull it off and throw it in the trash but I always run them like that and then I put a little piece of blue tape on the end of them to help hold any of the uh, hairs trying to escape into that brush so now let's get on to signatures on our baits we use a water slide they're, they're little tiny water slides my wife makes them she buys 20 pack of them and she can probably print a couple of hundred out of one sheet and it's just a water slide you just put this and water slide it on the bottom of your lure smooth it out let it dry for a few minutes and epoxy over it and it'll be there for a long long time so that's what we use some people like to sign them with pins if i sign it with pen it look like a chicken been on the bottom of that lure scratching around because i don't write very well so that's that that's the epoxy that's some of the tools we use with our epoxy the glitter that we add to our epoxy solo cups little bitty solo cups that's what i mix my epoxy and my paint in you can this is a four ounce cup you can get a smaller cup uh we just have thousands of these around we was at a auction and we bought sixty four thousand of these for five bucks so we got cups galore so sam's club walmart you can find it probably at any of those places so let's move on to eyes this is how I keep my eyes. I used to keep them over here in my drawer and my wife went and bought this worm bag and now they're all in here and they're all in sizes. Little individual things with different sizes eyes. This is what they are. And I got a lot of eyes folks. There's probably 10 or 15,000 eyes in here. And I got more over here. So that's how I keep my eyes, you know. You could put them in a photo album. You could keep them in these. You could you, whatever you want to do. Uh, sugar tit custom lures. We bought this, and it's an eye gauge. It'll tell you what size eye to put in the certain bait you're painting. It's a very handy tool. They're not very expensive. Very handy. But you know, sugar tits where we got ours. And after you've been painting a while, you just know what size eyes goes in there. It just comes natural. So I keep that up here. And I keep specialty eyes up here, like half eyes and stuff up here in that very front pocket. Some stencils I keep up there. That's about how I keep and store some of my stuff. So let's uh, move on to our next little segment, which is going to be rings and hooks. For me, I buy hooks in bulk. These are Mustad number sixes. Here, I buy them in bulk. I find them online and just buy them there. Now, these are number fours. Bought online in bulk. 200 hooks in there. And then you get to keep the coop pretty cool little case to have around for stuff but that's the hooks that I use is mustads uh, I've got these numbered number two number three three aughts number six number tens number fours number eights and number twelves and I keep hooks in here miscellaneous hooks so looks pretty good this thing is like six or seven bucks we got five of them over there full of stuff. The same way that I store my rings. Same way. Fours, five, six, sevens, eights. They're all in here. There's little bags. I keep them in bags. They go everywhere. Got rings galore. Uh, that's one thing that you really want to do is buy good quality rings 
Don't buy the cheap ones like you can get at Hobby Lobby because the fish can just pull that sucker apart. That's kind of how that works and that's how I store my stuff. Uh, rings, hooks, you can buy all that from uh, Sugar Tick customers. Eyes, you can buy all that from them. They have a starter kit if you're just starting to paint. Go get you one. Get started. So drip hooks, <clears throat> a lot of people have wheels that turns their lures, I don't, I use drip hooks and uh, I make my own, this is just an 18 gauge wire, aluminum wire, steel wire, I just cut me a piece off and just bend it and that's my drip hook, that, let me get a bait here behind me show you what I'm talking about after you paint put eyes on do all your stuff and epoxy that lure you just hang that drip hook right on the bottom of that bait and as that epoxy will run runs down that bait while it's drying it'll run right on down that drip hook and it won't clog right here and you'll have a big mess here it'll keep running so that's what I've used I've done thousands of baits this way every once in a while you'll have one get bad but not very often you know we may graduate up to a turner we've been talking about building this big one but we'll see how that all works out here in the future we're always upgrading just like y'all will be so that's the way that works so very easy to make very inexpensive to make and you can use them over and over and over and over and over you just take and knock that dried epoxy off there and use it again so i guess we'll get on to the next section of this okay folks so when we start to package our lures the hooks are always a problem ripping the bags and whatever so my wife got to thinking one day and she said well I don't want to spend all the big money for the hook covers so she went online and found little earring backs you just slide that right over the end of that hook if I can do it I'm blind there we go and it covers the barb and the tip on that hook package it very easily just little earring backs and just pull it off when you unpackage the lure so that works really well they're very inexpensive I don't know how many she buys thousand two thousand three thousand at a time and they're not very expensive we're going to talk about prepping the bait for paint for me I get a little bit of alcohol on a rag on a paper towel 70% alcohol and I just take and I clean that bait down really well with it lay it back on there and let it dry for a second we use scotch tape to tape the bills off you can use saran wrap you can do in about anything you want to do there but I prefer the blue painters tape it's just all preference And you just tape right along that bill. Tape it off good. Pretty easy little thing to do. Just get it all taped off good. That way you don't get paint on the bill. Some people paint the bills. It's just not my preference to paint the bills. So, so we wiped it down. We've taped the bill. Now this is our helping hands. Right here. This is what I actually paint the baits on. I just bat. They twist, they turn, they go all different directions. Very good tool to have. And uh, between each color, I will clean my brush with windshield washer fluid or Windex. Run it through there and clean it good. And then I'll run just a little bit of 70% alcohol through my brush. 
and it'll help keep that needle cleaned out and in good shape you put your finger over the end of the brush pull the trigger and it causes a blowback inside and it'll clean that needle out and that tip so it works very good and this is the helping hands uh, buy them at Harbor Freight five or six bucks is what they cost and they'll last a long long time The windshield washer fluid you can buy mostly at any any place you know so I just keep it in a squirt bottle like this I just squirt it inside my brush clean it out so that kind of takes care of that end of it now I guess we're going to talk about blanks so when I first started painting just to be sure that I was going to be happy with doing this and so forth and so on I bought cheap blanks off Amazon and remember in blanks you get what you pay for these things have plastic balls in them you barely hear them but they're very good to learn on you're not going to be selling them if you are you better just graduate on up right off the bat but if you're painting them for yourself by all means start with the cheaper blanks until you start learning what to do and how to paint uh, I don't know why I even keep these around because I'll never paint them uh, I went from that to this loud blanks frogs coffin bills jerk baits all of them steel balls they have steel balls in them. These have plastic balls in them. That's why they don't make much noise. Uh, this is a blank. And I have a clothesline that runs across up here. And I always try to keep 50 or 60 prime baits up there at a time. Because it's not nothing for me to get out here in a weekend and paint 100 baits. My wife will tell you that. She goes off to teach school or something. I come to the shop before the sun comes up and I go in way after it goes down. But this is a prime one. It's ready for paint. Right here. And that's out of 2.5 square bills what this one is. This is an S crank. This is a gilled frog. He spits water out the side. Coffin bill. 2.5 square bill. And a jerk bait. Uh, I buy all my blanks now from one place you can buy just almost you can buy your rings you can buy your blanks you can buy your eyes you can buy hooks everything except your paint your airbrush and your accessories you can buy from sugar tip custom lures and I buy all my blanks there now they're good quality blanks and a great service so that kind of covers that, you know, get started. You buy the cheaper ones to learn on. Then graduate yourself up to the more high dollar blanks. That's pretty good advice from an old feller. So I guess we'll move on to the next segment in this. And we're going to talk a little bit about the different wraps and the different stuff that I use to make different patterns on baits. Okay, folks, let's talk a little bit about the stencils that I use. Uh, this is a very cool effect it's called tool t-u-i-l-l-e -L -L -E. you wrap it very tightly around your bait and then spray gives it a very cool effect this is a floral ribbon here same thing makes a very cool effect on the side these are the clips that I use here there's lots of different clips you can use but this is how I tie my stencils to my bait with those another floral ribbon here that makes a very cool pattern that I use a lot of scales embroidery hooks rings whatever these things are called 
and I have all kinds of different scale materials that I can put in here different sizes so these work pretty good you just push that bait up there and make the scale and be gone uh, sponges this is a sea sponge and get some cool effects out of these on your bait too. Just cut you a piece off, get your little paint, dip it in there, get your paper towel, dab it off so it's not so wet and just start putting it on. Works very cool. Masonry sponge, same thing. You can see how much of it I've used. I just cut me some off with some of scissors and be done with it. Toothbrush. This is how I speckle my baits. I just take that toothbrush and I've got a little paint tray. And I put that paint in there and thin it out. Dip that in there and then dip it on my paper towel. And just run my thumb across of it and it'll speckle your bait. Very simple. Okay. Cricket. These pencils here are cut on a cricket. My very good friend over at Blind Symmetry sent me these. I have a cricket. We actually have two crickets, but we have not got them set up yet. But we're working that way, slowly but surely. These are great. I love these. Very good cross stencils. Uh, these, all these stencils here I bought on Amazon. I use them some, that's 1.5, there'll be one for each side, but you really want to put one side at a time and hold it up tight, spray it, pull it off, then move to the other side and do the other side the same way. Make sure that when you're using these, your paint is really dry or it's going to scratch your paint off. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty little, neat little stencils. I got some in here for some rattle traps. I gotta dig in here just a second to find one. There's a rattle trap, a small rattle trap stencil right there. Same way, make sure your paint's good and dry. Pull it up tight, spray it, be done with it. Jerk baits. These are for jerk baits. Same stencil, same, same principle. So, I don't use these very often anymore, but every once in a while I get them out using them. I uh, always on the lookout for some kind of stenciling material or, that I can use. And we was in Lubbock and we found this big old pumpkin at the Halloween store. You look, all the cool patterns you can get out of this. Out of that pumpkin for baits. You just always got to kind of be on the lookout for stuff like that. You'll stumble across it. I got two more of them back there hanging on the wall. Oh, we got pumpkins galore in here. So that's just kind of some of the stuff that I use. Uh, I've got all kinds of different places down there I've bought and tried. And some of them I like, some of them I don't like. You just got to trial and error until you get what you want in your combination of stencils you use. Okay folks, these are just some little tips, basic tips, if you're going to get started painting, uh, that you can use to help you along the way in your journey with this crazy thing that you're going to be addicted to the second you do the second lure. Just something that maybe help you along the way a little bit. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to email me at uglydoglures at gmail.com and I will do my best to answer your questions for you. So you folks have a very blessed week and we'll catch you later.